So we're tucked away off a dusty side street uh, just off the city centre in Athens. You might hear the traffic behind me. You might drive past it if you were unaware. Uh, tucked away on the uh, fourth, fifth and sixth floors of this nondescript building um, lies the Hellenic uh, Motor Museum. 4,000 square metres of Italian exotica mostly. Uh, amongst other things, you'll find Bugattis, Aston Martins, Lamborghinis, Zagatos, uh, Ferraris, and of course Maseratis. Um, this is travel vlog number one. Uh, I'm Ed, and this is Backroad Hero. Well, folks, you join me all suited and booted uh, today um, on the way to the airport. Uh, I'm going to go to Athens. Um, bit of fun. It doesn't happen very often that we've got a clear day uh, down route. Uh, we call it a standover. And I'm going to try and do uh, a little bit of a, a vlog style uh, video. A bit more kind of rustic and um, carefree than the, the usual heavy, heavily edited stuff. The intention is to combine my two loves, um, cars and food, so that's <laughs> That's the plan for tomorrow. Uh, the Hellenic uh, Motor Museum in Athens has got my name written all over it. So we're going to try something new, uh, do a little bit of a vlog and uh, see whether you uh, actually um, like it or not. Um, got a few other places um, I've been before and like to go again um, down route to take the channel in maybe a slightly different direction. So if you like this, um, yeah, write a comment below and we'll see where we can go. So here we go in the uh, in the office. Um, Charlie's with me today, and uh, he's doing the walk around. So we're just getting the uh, the jet uh, fired up. Uh, we'll get to Athens. Uh, not really much recording um, on board. Uh, my uh, airline's not really in uh, great favour of it. So we'll keep that one to the uh, uh, for another day. Um, it's not a flying vlog. Um, I've got work to do. <laughs> so I'll see you at the far side. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll get ourselves off to the museum tomorrow. So we're two and a half hours into the flight, uh, 250 miles still to go, and that's going to take us at around about uh, 40 minutes, uh, thereabouts. Uh, flight was pretty good, um, just about to start our descent in about uh, 13 minutes from now, so, um, well, all good so far. Uh, not much else to film really, it's, uh, it's a bit dark outside as you can see, but uh, everything behaving as it should. Uh, we'll, uh, well, we'll see you on the ground, if not it'll be tomorrow morning, uh, when I uh, come out for a, a little walk. Um. Well, morning folks. Um, well, this is not a view that you get to see every day. That's the Acropolis out there on the hillside. It was beautifully lit up last night, but I couldn't get enough um, light for the uh, video camera. Anyway, um, get outside, it's a nice day, about 20 degrees, and we'll get up to the Motor Museum. Uh, it's about a 40 minute walk away. So here we have the hotel lobby. What a nice place. So please bear with me folks, I'm not very good at this vlogging lark. Um, so <laughs> if you, anybody out there who knows uh, how to do this properly, has any suggestions then uh, yeah <laughs> drop, drop a comment below um, uh, and I'll, I'll take it on board um, if you'd like to see something uh, different just let me know what's uh, what's interesting and what's not
So folks, here we are outside the Hellenic Motor Museum, 4,000 square meters uh, for automotive history. So let's go inside and have a little look. So here we are, Hellenic uh, Motor Museum. I'm just going to do a little uh, piece to camera um, because they're still um, wearing masks inside. So I'll be doing most of my filming just uh, point of view. Uh, maybe behind me you can see a little Freddie Flintstone <laughs> car. So he's beaten me to the museum. So maybe we'll see him inside. Um, well, well, it goes in chronological order. I'll have a little chat uh, at each one. If I can add some more info, then uh, I'll do that. Uh, as I said, uh, vlog number one, essentially, and uh, we'll see where it goes. You know what? Instantly greeted with the smell of oil. Maybe a bit of castrol R in there. And a wonderful private museum. Look at that. The old workshop. It's on three floors here, uh, one up and one down from here. Um, look at that, a little Morris Minor Convertible. I would have thought from the late 20s. Uh, 1931 it is. Um, I've driven one of these in kind of uh, saloon form. I find it really quite underpowered. Um, 847cc's. Um, it just wasn't. Um, it just wasn't that drivable, I have to say. Um, not for the sort of thing compared to the uh, the Morris 10 that we have. Look at that, a little bit of work going on. Um, and uh, just a lovely little setup. So, not exactly uh, motor driven, but a little horse drawn carriage water pump from 1895 onto the Model M, uh, 6.3 horsepower, uh, 1906, and this is a monster of a thing. <laughs> Look at that, it's, it's more, um, it's more tractor in size <laughs> than it is chain driven. Look at the monster on that. Tell you what, if that breaks, you know all about it. So an American La France, 1918. A 14.5 liter straight six. <laughs> 14 and a half liters, good God. 105 horsepower, 110 kilometers per hour. Um, I'll tell you what's scary. There's nothing much to hold you in there. Uh, a mere four inches of seat. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sliding out on the road, so, but very, very nice. Lincoln Sport 1927. Pretty car, I have to say. Kind of an orangey red color. The dicky seat out right the back. Lovely, absolutely beautiful. The chrome work's amazing. Um, the prancing dog on the, uh, on the radiator. 1923 Lincoln, big car, a Chrysler, 1928. You just imagine them stood on the running boards with their submachine guns, <laughs> their spats. Um, an Avion Voisin, C4 Roadster, 1926. Sound like I know what I'm talking about. I'm just, I'm just reading the plaque, but here we go. Looks a lot more like it. I see you round the corner and you're greeted with this. Sea uh, uh, of Rosso Corsa, uh, 1987 uh, Testarossa. Rosso Corsa and uh, Crema interior, 390 brake. A lot for those days. And that classic 5 litre V12. And those defining intake strikes that are so difficult to clean <laughs> but getting up close and personal all the touches there's nothing more distinctive than that flat wide back end it just makes it look um, wider than it actually is it's not a particularly wide car 
in real terms. Uh, registration too wide. So 365 uh, GT4 Berlinetta Boxer, 1974, 380 brake and uh, one of 387 produced. What you might see here, even in Greece, it's a right-hand drive car. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, no headrests. So neck snapping. It's not that beautiful kind of Daytona leather. And really distinctive with this um, black on the bottom and uh, color on the top, which is quite distinctive. Uh, the cars of this era. It's carried even on to the, uh, the 348s in homage to this. Uh, they were originally um, black bottomed and most people actually sprayed them out. But you can see elements of it as well on the Testarossa. Uh, the distinctive uh, lower air dam, air intakes, um, and the bottom ends of the sills. All black, I suppose, easier. Um, to rectify with stone chips, etc., etc. So, onto the British. Here's the E Type uh, Roadster. This one, an automatic Series 3. 19 and 74 V12 Roadster. Beautiful. And to match it, another Series 3. Uh, 1974, so matching cars. This one, a six cylinder. Two plus two, coupe, a classic. Um, Jaguar lines, just stunning. You wonder where center exit pipe started. There you go. Um, obviously a collector of steering wheels. Look at that. So when's the last time you saw one of these? Maserati Camson. Penciled with a uh, with a ruler, no doubt. Sharp lines, styling. Unusual that the uh, the vent doesn't go all the way across the bonnet. Kind of stops halfway, giving it that kind of lopsided look. 1976 V8, five liter, 320 brake. Tell you what, it's gorgeous. And a Lamborghini Espada, not unlike the Camzin kind of long right this one and it's kind of a sky blue really really suits it with the with the red interior some knock-on magnesium wheels and those knacker ducks controlling the air 1970 4 litre v12 350 brake so it says here Faruco Lamborghini had the expectation to construct a four-seater supercar a mere five years after introducing its first car and three years after launching the sensational Mura Lamborghini upstage Ferrari again by announcing a four-seater, the Espada, at the 1968 Geneva Motor Show. Uh, the result was a very impressive wedge-shaped low car that received a huge presence despite the fact of being shorter in length than a Ford Mustang. Tell you what's deceptive, it's really low. Uh, Marcello Gandini gave the Espada a style which represented the merge of two futuristic Bertoni cars of Marzell based on Mira, bearing the glass transparent doors that allowed the view of Mrs. Lamborghini's attractive legs and of uh, Piranha based on the experimental no. Some back ends to die for here. Look at that. Quick scan of the room. So it doesn't get much meaner than a Merak. Maserati, Merak SS from 78. Three litre, three litre V6, 320 brake. But look at the presence. This front wheel staring you down. Down to her nose. And little bumpers. Now that is a sight for sore eyes. Imagine that pulling up in your rear view mirror. Inside the Merak, 
the Lamborghini Huracan of 1974, two and a half liter uh, V8. Looks pretty much like a baby. The Maserati Indy, uh, two plus two, I suppose. 4.1 liter V8. And a beautiful little ISO. And here we descend into a sea of Rosso Corsa, or Racing Red as it's known. Well, almost Rosso Corsa. <laughs> there we go. 356A, an early one, 1955. I mean, this is a, a stunning private collection. Not sure who owns it anymore, but you know what? Clearly had a passion for everything. Uh, it's just fantastic in the day. Little Fulvia, 1.3S, that classic kind of sit up and bag stance. And uh, here we get onto the Pininfarina wedge. That is the Mondial. This one a QV or a Quattro Valvoli. Four valves basically. Rosso and Crema. 308 GTS, this one the injected one. Um, 1980. It's got the little spoiler at the back. And a pretty, pretty, pretty little Labarth. This one is a Gatto. Yes, quite distinctive actually. Well, there's a Gatto here. It's classic styling, it's, it's really... So here we go. Um, brothers from a different mother. We've got the 246 uh, GTS, just meaning it's a, a spider. With a classic uh, Dino 2.4 V6. Um, an engine that was designed by Ferrari's son. Dino himself and on his deathbed had discussions with his chief engineers and engine builder and the engine whilst he didn't see it to fruition it actually bears his name and he had a big um, involvement in actually uh, designing the uh, the basics around it but arguably the uh, the fate Dino uh, 2400 Spider which uses the same engine as the as the Dino is arguably a prettier car I have to say um, just look at the swooping lines of that uh, front wheel arch down into the quad lamps it's just stunning I'll try and get a shot of them both together so you can actually see the Dino is distinctive, uh, but out of the two, I'm really sorry, but I would have uh, the 2400 Spider. Arguably rarer, 424 of these produced uh, to the Dinos, well, two and a half thousand nearly. But that is well, that is just sex on wheels, as they say. Not that I would say no to a, to a 246, but I'm always one for a bit of rarity. <laughs> as, you, as you know, having owned one of 26 911 Super Sports uh, back in the day. So the red theme continues, obviously the red room. If you haven't seen the, the Red Room in the Hens Museum, it's well worth it as well. So it looks like we have the British section here. Some in Talbot, Tourer, the Alvis with the bunny rabbit, the prancing hare perhaps. And then we have the Wolseley, nine horsepower Tourer it says. And Enfield Electric, hey, there you go, who says it was never invented. This is the 70s after all. And then the classic lines of the Morgan. A 4-4-1600. Everyone loves an SL. There it is. It's 
classic vertical head lumps. This one on a D reg. Cell UK registered. 1966, 2.3 V6. Here we have the Jensen Interceptor. Another one panned with a straight ruler. And the Series 3 V8 Aston. So if you're wondering where BMW got their inspiration for silly grills, maybe they had a look at the Allard uh, from 1949. You'll see that the grill in itself is open to the radiator and then it stupidly <laughs> extends over the bonnet. So there you go. BMW, it's not a new concept. You can make any car look silly. So I'm really sorry folks, but this is probably the ugliest Aston Martin ever produced. Certainly in my opinion anyway. The DB2 uh, fixed head coupe. Not really sure what they were doing here, but that's, uh, that's a face only a mother could love. <laughs> but the rest of it you're getting to see kind of classic. Aston Martin and the lines and the tail, but they they came a long way from this uh, to the DB5s and 6s. So can you imagine yourself cruising from your country mansion off for a picnic, the wind blowing in your hair, a delage, a drophead coupe from 1934. Looks very like um, a lot of the kind of Rolls and Bentley, those big headlamps. This one's stunning. It's a white over purple. Unusual color combination, but I'm sure back in the day this was the ultimate in luxury. An absolutely stunning, stunning car. And as if you didn't need uh, enough wind in your hair, a windscreen opening, ingenious, kind of hinged at the top and uh, opened by a little release there, a little screw type uh, kind of lock. And, a, and from the uh, 34 Delage through to the Bugattis, as I said before, really quite distinctive in there. Um, the paintwork, you can see the influences all the way through. The uh, first one's in 1933, sorry, 1930 Type 44. And then we get on to 1934. A lot happened in those few years. Uh, type 57 coupes, not the racing cars that Bugattis are probably uh, more famous for. Still beautiful examples. A lot of Bugattis featured quite distinctive paintwork. This one, uh, black over yellow yellow over black whatever way you want to call it i hope you've enjoyed this little um, look around this uh, gorgeous collection if you've uh, a couple of hours to spare in uh, athens in the city center then it's uh, it's well worth certainly an hour or two if you want to see me do more of this stuff then please do let me know comment below uh, in the meantime i'm going to finish the walk around uh, showing you most of the interesting stuff um, until the next time thank you all the best now bye bye